money belonged to that generation who fervently believed that education was indeed one of the fundamental keys to the improvement of the human condition. And she saw Charlotte College and UNCC as a way to reach out and embrace a lot of young people who probably otherwise would have no opportunity for higher education. Even before the buildings were built, I went to a uh, bunny called and invited me as a reporter to come to a little dinner that was going to be held on the campus in a barn. It was going to be a picnic dinner and they were going to have music and the students were going to be there and this was a kind of uh, opening of the new campus. And I went and it was a wonderful evening. And Bonnie stood there and looked out over the land from that second floor loft and pointed out where things were going to be. Here's where we're going to have the student union and here's where we're going to have the academic center and here's where we're going to have the athletic fields and here's where we're going to have one day we're going to have a medical school and one day we're going to have you know she just envisioned that thing and you couldn't be in Miss Combs presence without realizing number one what she had done and and, uh, and and what her her ultimate vision was, and she was consumed with it. Uh, she could sell it to <laughs> to the most negative person in the world, and uh, so it was just always great to be in her presence. Too. She was absolutely consumed with um, trying to make that school realize the vision that she had for it. And anybody or anything that would aid that process, she would obviously do everything in her powers of cajolery to win it over. But if it stood in the way of that, uh, she could be fierce. And and I did, I did see that thing. Well, Bonnie was always, um she was leading and she was always <laughs> pestering these business leaders to do more, give us more money and do this and do that. And, you know, and it's hard to say no to Bonnie, which you find out pretty quickly. <laughs> Bonnie's one of the most positive people you would ever meet. Um, she's very smart, she's brilliant, uh, she's charming. She can talk to anybody at any level and be at ease and put you at ease. I would not have gone on to complete my bachelor's degree uh, had it not been for Miss Bonnie. Uh, several things about her. She's the most positive person I've ever met in my life. When things were so bad and you would talk to Miss Bonnie, she would say, isn't it a wonderful day? director and I was head of the institution, let us say it that way, by whatever name they chose to call me, uh, for 19 years while we were staying alive and becoming the campus of the university. I had to stay alive first because 49 was that critical year when late in the spring the university said we won't continue you after June 30th of 49. I remember in the fall of 60, uh, I always told Mr. Atkins, I said, now, we've worked too hard and long to get these, this thing going. We've got to have a groundbreaking ceremony. And we awarded the contracts on a Thursday afternoon. Friday morning, I came out here. And I want you to know that we're glad the work was underway, but we hadn't had the groundbreaking. There were bulldozers. There were, they were just, <laughs> F.N. Thompson and his people were just doing their work getting us ready. I went back and called Mr. Adkins. He said, well, plan the groundbreaking for Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and Monday morning, on a cool Monday morning day in November, uh, Mary Denny, I can remember, and all those other faculty folks and students had those chairs out, and the groundbreaking occurred. The word came back 
uh, by telephone that the vote had been affirmative. Charlotte College was now going to become the Charlotte campus of the University of North Carolina. There was a spontaneous gathering around the bell and spontaneously students began ringing the bell. It was within her in a unique sort of way a drive to build at, at the city of Charlotte what the city of Charlotte long ago should have had the thriving university campus. She saw a, the need. She saw the opening to fulfill that need. And she then, in an act of real courage, I think, just invaded that community power structure down there and said, all right, folks, well, this is what we're going to do. And it wound up where it is. Now, what greater legacy could you give to the state than that? And uh, we all do things on the way to a journey's end. But the important point is, what was the motivation that kept you going? What kept her heart so throbbing to do this? It was the fact that she knew what it would do for children who didn't know themselves and would never know but for that place. So that's, that's what you have to write on the plaque when you write about Bonnie. Complete, total dedication. Well, the day the final vote was taken, it was the longest day I ever lived. Finally, the call came that said, uh, it's passed. The victory had come. So I called uh, Mrs. Sims, my secretary. She said, listen, Miss Cohn, uh, the bell is ringing. It's ringing once for each member of the delegation and twice for you. 